for that. Uh, I never get to go first. Never get to go first. But it means um, there's less chance of me boring the arse off you. So it is good to go first sometimes. Look, um, today is a serious affair. Uh, as the world switches its gaze to our so-called world leaders at the G20 summit in Buenos Aires, I think many of us look on in despair when we find out that the issue of climate change and biodiversity loss is not even on the agenda. It should be the only thing on the agenda at that summit if they were truly serious about sorting out the world's problems. But I know they're worried. Macron is worried. But it's not about climate change. It's about poor the crown prince of Saudi Arabia because he got caught red-handed dismembering a human being alive or ordering that. That's what Macron is worried about. They're not worried about the real issues that are confronting our society. So that's why you being here today and the activities and activism of people around the world from Australia through to here and in Poland is so important because you make a political space for politicians, politicians not just like me, but my fellow parliamentarians in uh, Westminster. And I'm afraid to say, though, that although climate change and the other planetary boundaries that are now being breached at a rate of knots are the defining political challenge of our times, I'm afraid right now for many of my parliamentarians in Westminster, they've still not woken up and smelt the fact that their coffee is burning. It's burning now and they need to wake up. So the message from the front bench of the Labour Party has been quite clear. John MacDonald asked me to come on to the Shadow Treasury team and develop something called sustainable economics. And the reason that we wanted to do that is because John MacDonald and the front bench understand that we need the most radical economic policies possible if we are to save our world. And what that means is it means that the Treasury which has been at the forefront of blocking and stopping the fight against climate change, needs to be front and centre and at the heart of stopping climate change. And I can promise you now that the next Labour, radical Labour government, led by John, Jeremy Corbyn and John MacDonald, would ensure that we make sure the economics, economics of the future puts that challenge at the centre of our economic policy, not on the periphery, not on the outside edge, not as a bolt-on extra, but at the very heart of the Treasury. And that means that when we spend, when we look at investment, we will also factor in climate change and sustainability. It's essential that we get that right, because if we don't get that right, we understand the time frames we're talking about. I've sat down with some of the smartest people I've met when it comes to environment, the environment and climate change, some of the world's leading physicists. And when it comes to climate change, I understand we have 10 years tops to be able to decarbonize our economy by 50%. And then that qualifies you for the next 10 years where you need another 50%. And then the next 10 years where you need another 50%. Miss any one of those and you have missed the qualifiers. You are out of the game. We understand that, we know that, and that's why we now understand that we have a fight on our hands to ensure that this country plays its part in making sure that it tackles climate change. And I'll tell you another reason why this country needs to be at the forefront of tackling climate change. Because we were the very first country to industrialise. You all know that. And what we did with that ability to industrialise, to make those products, is we took people from other parts of the world, from Africa, and this is the pure irony of climate change. We dropped them on some islands in the West Indies, where my dad is from, and they were used to make sugar. And that sugar was used, the money from that profit from those sugar plantations was used to invest in the Industrial Revolution. And then once we'd industrialised, we used those guns and boats and that industrial machinery to colonise most of the planet. And we now have the perverse situation where people in the West Indies annually now cannot get insurance on their, on their islands at all now because of the annual hurricanes that destroy their 
uh, economies and their countries. And I find it perverse that in this country, that many on the left that talk about international solidarity at the same time turn their backs on the issue of climate change and biodiversity loss, cannot see that international working solidarity starts by tackling climate change and undoing the wrongs that have been done in the past and are happening now. So my last, my last point is this. For many years now, people on the left, many on the left, have seen socialism from a certain perspective. My message to the Labour Party, my message to those who call themselves as part of the left is this. Socialism in the 21st century must be about the environment. The fight for socialism must be about protecting the planet. Because as, the, as we move into the 21st century, I understand that the fight, against, so, the fight for social justice, for social and economic justice, ultimately is also one that we, as socialists, understand is a fight against inequality. Because when you look where the most uh, carbon is coming from, the top 10% in this country produce 50% of all the carbon output. The bottom 10% produce, the bottom 50%, sorry, produce just 10% of carbon output. So if you can see the fact that climate change is so inexecurably linked, linked to poverty and injustice, then you can see that the fight for the 21st century for socialists is to create a better, safer, sustainable world. And that is the challenge for the Labour Party, and that is a challenge for anyone that considers themselves on the left. So thank you for being here today, thank you for listening to me, and I know, I know, that if there is a Labour government in future, we will be with you and we will be fighting for 1.5 degrees to stay alive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Clive. We'll take you as the first speaker again next time, definitely. Thank you.